Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and you can imagine when you're using the web, almost every single website that you use has some form of login component to it where you have a user account and you can log in, log out, etc. And I bet you the project that you're thinking about working on also has that exact same login component. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the boilerplate template for how to set up your very own login system inside of your application. Let's get started now. Before we jump into coding, let me show you the absolutely beautiful looking website that we're going to build in this video. Well, maybe not so beautiful. What we have here is a login screen. We can click register and go to our register screen. And let's say that we register a user here, just a very basic user. Click register. It'll bring us to our login page. And then if we want to log in, let's say we choose an email that doesn't exist and we're going to choose password and we click login. It'll tell us that the user with the email doesn't exist. And if we actually log in with the correct email, but the wrong password, it'll tell us our password's incorrect. And finally, if we type in both the same email and the same password and click login, it's going to bring us to the page, display our name, and give us a logout button. Also, if we redirect to that login page, it's actually going to redirect us back to this home page because we're already logged in. As soon as we click logout though, it's going to bring us back to login. And if we try to go to that home page, it won't let us. It's just going to redirect us back to the login page. So now that we know what we're building, let's fire up Visual Studio Code. And we're just going to have a completely blank project to get started with because that's the best way to do things. And the first thing we need to do is initialize our project. Since we're going to be using npm to store all of our dependencies, we can just type in npm init, and we can just use the default value. So we can hit enter a bunch of times. And here we go. It's going to give us a package.json, which is where we're going to store all of our dependencies. And to get started, I'm only going to install the dependencies we're going to need to get the basic application running. And then we'll install dependencies as we run into the need for them later. So we can type in npm i, and this is going to let us start installing dependencies. And the first dependency we need is called express. This will be our application server. And the next dependency we need is ejs, and this will be our templating language for all of our different views, such as login, register, etc. We're also going to need a few development dependencies. So we can type in npm i dash dash save dev to say that these are for development only. And we want nodemon as well as dot env. And nodemon is going to allow us to restart our server automatically every time we make changes. And dot env will just allow us to have environment variables that we can store inside of a dot env file that we can load into our server. So let's create that dot env file now. Just call it dot env. And this is where our environment variables will go. And we also want to create here a dot git ignore because we actually want to ignore these files. We don't want to commit our .env and we also don't want to commit our node modules to our git repository. And this is because node modules is just all of our installed dependencies and .env could contain secret sensitive information we don't want to share with the world. The very last thing that we need to do is actually set up our package.json so that we can start our server inside of the script section. Let's just create a script called dev start. And inside of here, what we're going to do is we're just going to run nodemon and we're going to run server.js, which is the server file we're going to be creating. Now we can save that, create that server file, server.js. And now inside of our console, if we run nodemon, whoops, not nodemon, if we run npm run dev start, just like that, that's going to run that script that we just created in here, this dev start script. And every single time we make a change to our server.js, it's going to refresh our server and rerun all of our code. To get started, the very first thing we want to do is just set up our basic Express application. So let's import Express. We can do that just using an Express variable. And we can just say require Express. That's going to bring in Express. And we also want to get the app variable from Express. So we can just say call the Express function here. And if we come down here and type in app.listen and give it a port, we now have an application running on port 3000. When we save that, we go to localhost 3000. You can see we get cannot get slash, and that's because we have no route set up for our application. So the first thing we should do is set up a route. We can just say app.git slash. This is going to be our homepage route that you'll need to be logged into to access. And inside of here, we just get a function which has a request variable and a response variable. And all we want to do is actually send them a certain page that we're going to create. So we can just say response.render. And inside of here, we want to render a file. We're going to call that index.ejs. And we can save that. And right now, we don't have any files being rendered. In order to get that working, what we need to do is create a folder called views. And inside of here, we need to create that view index.ejs. And now inside of here, let's just put some code. We'll put an h1, whoops, h1. And inside of it, we're just going to say hi, just like this. Save that. And now when we refresh this, you see that we get hi being sent out to the server. Now, in order to use ejs syntax, we need to tell our server that we're using ejs. So inside of here, we can say app.set. And what we want to do is we want to set the view engine. So just like this, we can say type in view engine, and we want to set this here to EJS. 
And this is why we installed that EJS dependency earlier, because now our view engine is set to EJS and we can actually use EJS in our template. So for example, let's say that we want to pass a user down. We can just say user, actually let's just say we want to pass down a name. And we can just give a name of Kyle, for example, as a basic example. And inside of here, we can just put that name by putting it inside of this less than with a percent and an equal sign. This will actually render out a variable and we can just render name. Now, if we save that and we refresh over here, you'll see it says, hi, Kyle. Now that we have a super simple server set up, let's actually create the routes we need for our login page and our register page. First, we'll create views for them. We'll call it login.ejs. And we'll also create a view here called register.ejs. These will be our two different pages. And then inside of our server, we're going to create routes for both of those. So we can just use get routes again, since we just want to get them via the URL. The first one is going to be login. And again, it'll take a request and a response. And inside of here, what we want to do is we just want to copy this code up here for rendering, but instead we want to render our login.ejs. And we don't need to worry about passing any extra information to it. So here's our login. And we can do the exact same thing for register, except for we're going to change our route to be register. And we want to make sure that we render the register.ejs file, which is inside of our views folder. Now, if we save that and inside of here, we just put the text login. And in here, we put the text register. Make sure we save both of those. And if we go to slash login, you'll see it says login. And if we go to slash register, you'll see it says register. Now that we know our pages are rendering, let's create the actual HTML inside of them for rendering our forms. We'll do register first. And the first thing we want to do is we want to have an h1 and inside of here we're just going to put the text register so we know that we're on our register page and then after that we're going to have our form which is going to contain all of our different inputs make sure we close that off and inside of this form we're going to have an action whoops action and this action here is going to be slash register and we want to make sure that we change the method here to be post and this means that we're going to post to a route with the name slash register inside of our server. So let's create that right now. We'll do it right here after our app.get. And this one's going to be an app.post. And it's going to be the same route of register. And again, this is going to have a request and a response variable inside of that function. And we'll just implement this later. For now, we're going to work on making sure that our HTML in the register.ejs is complete. The first thing we need to do is we need to have a row. So we'll just use a div for doing this. And this row is actually going to contain all of our information for our login and for the name. So we're going to have here an input or a label first. And this label is going to be for our name element. And we want to make sure we just label this as name. Make sure we close off this label. Next, we can actually create the input, which is going to be for that name. It's going to have a type here. Whoops. A type, which is going to be text. We want to make sure we give it an ID, which is the same as the for. So it's going to be name. And we also want to give it a name, which is how we'll access it on the server. And this will just be name. Lastly, we want to make sure this is required, so we'll use the required attribute. Now let's save this, refresh our page, and you'll see we have our name input right here. Let's copy this down because we're going to need a few more inputs. We're going to have our first input, which is going to be email. So we're going to just change everything up here to be email. Type is going to be email. Oops, email. We want to make sure the ID is email, so it matches this for. And lastly, the name is email. And down here, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do this for password. So make sure we change all of our old text to be password, type is password, ID is password, and of course, name is password. Save that and refresh, and you see now we have our name, our email, and our password being set. The last thing we need to do is actually to create a button to submit our form. So we'll just create a button with the type of submit, and inside of here, we can just put in the text of register. Now when we save that, refresh, we have all of our form elements for registering our page. The last thing we're going to want to do is actually add in an anchor tag, which will just link us back to our login page. So we'll just have an href here, which is going to go to slash login. And we just want to put in the text login. Now, if we refresh and click login, you'll see we get brought back to our login page. And our login page is going to be almost exactly the same as register. So let's copy that, paste it over here. Instead, we're going to want to put login up here. And we want to make sure our href is going to our register page with the text of register. And of course, we want to post to our login route instead of to our register route. Also, the last thing we can remove is this name. And we can change this register text here to say login. Now if we refresh this, you see we get a login page that has an email, a password, a login button, and we can go back to the register page or back to the login page. We can really change around whichever one we want to be on. Now that we have our pages complete, let's go back into our server and actually implement these post methods. First, we want to create the post method for our login. This is just going to be posting to slash login. And we also, since we're going to be getting information from forms, what we need to do is come up here and we actually need to say app.use and we need to tell it that we want to use express.url encoded and we want to make sure we pass it the option of extended 
we want to put this as false. Essentially, all that this is doing is it's telling our application that what we want to do is take these forms from our email and password, and we want to be able to access them inside of our request variable inside of our post method. So inside of post here for our register, we could say request.name, whoops, request.body.name, and that would correspond to this name field right here. We could do the same thing for email, and of course, lastly, the same thing for password. And what we put after body here corresponds exactly to this name field. So name is name, name is email, name is password. Whatever this name field is corresponds to what we're going to use after body to access it. Now what we're going to use is instead of using a database to store our users, we're just going to store them in a local variable inside of our server. So let's create a variable up here. We're just going to say const users is going to be equal to an empty array. Now this is something you would never want to do in production, but it's much easier to use just a local variable as opposed to connecting to an entire database especially since this tutorial is only focused on the authentication and login portion and not on how to connect to a database. If you want to learn how to connect to a database in an application, I have an entire full stack course on YouTube for Node.js and MongoDB that you can check out. I'll have it linked in the cards and the description below. So now down here inside of our body, we also need to be able to hash our user's password. And to do that, we're going to use something called bcrypt, which is a library that we want to install. So down here inside of our terminal, we can just hit plus to open up a new terminal. And we can type in npm i bcrypt, and bcrypt is going to allow us to hash passwords as well as to compare hashed passwords to make sure that our application is entirely secure. Once that's done downloading, we can come up to the top here and we can actually include that. So we can say const bcrypt is going to be equal to require, just like that, and we want to make sure we require bcrypt. There we go, now we actually have access to that variable. Let's make sure we go back to our other console that has our actual application running on it. And inside of here, what we want to do is we want to create a new user with the correct hashed password. So to do this, we're going to use a try catch block because we actually are using asynchronous code. And what we want to do is we want to make sure this is an async function so that we can use try catch inside of it. And what we want to do is we want to make a hashed password. So we can create a variable called hashed password. And that's going to be equal to bcrypt.hash. And what we want to do is we want to pass it in the password, which is request.body.password. And we also want to pass it how many times that we want it to generate essentially that hash, how secure do we want it to be. And we're going to use the value 10, which is just a good standard default value, which is going to make it fairly quick, but also quite secure. And we need to make sure that we actually await this because this is asynchronous. So it's going to return after waiting for it. So now here we have an actual hashed password, which we can store in our database. And if you want more in-depth information on security for authentication with hash hashing passwords, I have an entire video, which I'll also link in the cards and the description, that goes over just authentication and hashing passwords using bcrypt inside of Node.js. Now what we can do down here is we have that users variable. We can just push a new user to it. And this user is first going to have an ID that we can uniquely identify it for. So we'll just use string. This is going to be a unique identifier for us. Again, if you had a database, this would be automatically generated, so you wouldn't have to worry about this step. Next, we want to get the name from the request. So we'll say request.body.name. We want to get the email, whoops, email, which is request.body.email. And lastly, this password is instead of the request.body.password, we want to use that hashed password right here because this is actually safe to store in our database. Now, if all of that was successful, we want to redirect the user back to the login page. So we can say response whoops, dot redirect, and we want to redirect them to slash login so that they can log in with the account they just registered. But if for some reason we had a failure, we just want to redirect them back to the uh, register page here. So redirect to register, and we can remove this bogey line down here. And that's our entire application for registering users. Now, if I save that and at the bottom here, we just put a console dot log for our users. So we can see if we added a user, we can come in here, type in a name, we'll use W, w at w and a password of w and if we click register you'll see down here in the console we get printed out an id which is just the current timestamp we have the name w email w at w and this hashed password which is completely safe for us to store in our database now one thing to note is that every time we save our application and it reloads this variable users is going to get reset to an empty array so we just have to make sure we remember that and every time we make a change we just need to re-add our user and this is purely because we're not using a database. As I said earlier, this is just in memory. This is something, again, you would not want to do in a production application. Now that we have our register functionality done, the next thing to work on is login. And the actual act of checking to make sure the user's name and email and password are the same is not too difficult. But to actually persist that user across all of your different requests gets a little bit involved. 
So we're going to use a really handy library called Passport.js, which is used by nearly everyone for authentication. So let's go over here to our other terminal where we can actually install that. And what we want to do is we just want to type in npm i, and we want to install Passport, as well as Passport Local. And the local version essentially allows us to use usernames and passwords for logging in. Password has a or Passport has a bunch of different ways you can log in, whether it's through Google, Facebook, local password, email, etc. So we just want to use the local version. But again, if you want to do experiment with other versions, feel free to. Also, in order to store and persist our user across different pages, we need to use something called session. So we're going to install Express Session. And, and also to display messages for if we fail to log in, we're going to install something called Express Flash, which is used by Passport inside the internals to display those nice handy messages for wrong email, wrong password, etc. So after that finishes installing, there we go, we can now actually set up our Passport to be working with our login. And while we could put all this information into our server file here, it's quickly going to become quite large and bloated. So what I like to do is actually create a separate file. And we're just going to call this here passportconfig.js. And in here, we're going to put all of our different passport related information. And we're going to do it all inside of a function, which we're going to just call initialize. There we go. And inside of this function, we're going to initialize our passport, which we're going to make sure that we pass to our initialize function. And then inside of our server, what we want to do is we actually want to require that. So we can just come down here and we can require that function. We'll just call it here, initialize passport. Oops, and that's going to be equal to equal to require. And we want to make sure that we require here our passport config. And then we can just call that function initialize passport. And we'll pass it in our passport variable, which we can just get by using const, whoops, const passport is equal to require of passport, which is just that library we just installed. Now we are calling this function initialize passport inside of our passport config here, and we can do all of our configuration for passport inside of this single file. And to use that local version of passport, what we want to do is we want to come up here and we want to create a variable, which is going to call local strategy. Whoops, strategy. There we go. And we're going to set this equal to require passport local. And we just want to get the strategy from that. So we can just say dot strategy. This is going to be our local strategy. And then we can come down here and say passport dot use. And we actually want to use that local strategy. So we can just say new local strategy. And inside of here, this is going to take options. The first option that we want to pass is we want to pass the username field. And this essentially says, what is our username called? By default, it's going to be username. But in our example, we're calling this email. So here, we just want to put in email. And you can also pass in the password field, but it defaults to password. And in our application, we already call it passport or password. So we're perfectly fine there. The next thing that we need to do is we actually need to pass a second variable here, which is going to be the function that this is going to call to authenticate our user. So we'll just create a function here. We're just going to call it authenticate, whoops, authenticate user. There we go. And we're just going to pass in that function name, which we'll create up here as a function called authenticate user. And actually to make this easier on ourselves, we're actually going to put this authenticate user function inside of our initialize function. We'll just make it an arrow function. And this authenticate user function is going to take in a few different parameters. The first parameter that this is going to take in is going to be the email. In our case, this is the username field. Next thing is going to be our password. And lastly, it's a done function. Essentially, we're going to call this whenever we're done authenticating our user. So now that we have that done, we have our passport.use set up. The next thing we need to do is set up passport for serializing our user. So we can just come in here, serialize user. And inside of here, we're going to take a function, which is going to take a user, and it's going to take a done. And this is going to serialize our user to store inside of the session. And we need to have a function which is going to do the exact opposite of deserializing our user. And this is again going to take in here an ID and done because we're going to serialize our user as a single ID. Now let's work on our authenticate user function because this is essentially what we're going to call from our login using our email password to make sure our user is correct. So the first thing we want to do is get our user by email. So we can just create a user here and we're just going to say that this is going to be get user by email and we're going to pass in the email. This is a function that we're going to create, but we don't have to worry about it right now. We just know that this is going to return us a user by email, or it's going to return null if there is no email for that user. So we want to check to make sure that we actually have a user. So we can say if our user is null, then we for some reason cannot find the user and we want to return. So we can just say return done, which is this function we need to call every time we're done. And the first parameter is the error. 
In our case, we don't have an error because the error would be if something went wrong on your server. And in our case, there is no error on the server. The next thing we need to do is we need to return the user we found. In our case, we found no user, so we'll return false. And we can also return a message, which will be displayed. This is essentially our error message. We can just say no user with that email. There we go. And now that we know if we get past this if statement that we actually have a user, what we can do is we can actually try to make sure that the user's password matches this password that's passed in here. And to do that, we're going to need bcrypt. So let's make sure we take in bcrypt by using the require statement. Whoops, require. And we want to require that bcrypt library just like that. And then down here, this is again asynchronous. So we're going to wrap this inside of a try catch. And inside of the try portion of this try catch, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we check by awaiting our bcrypt dot compare. And the first thing we want to pass in is the password that the user sent in with the login form, which is this password. And we want to compare that to our user dot password, just like this, whoops, password. And if this returns true, then that means that we actually have an authenticated user. So everything returns successfully, but else if it did not return true, then that means that our user's password did not match. So let's do the bad case first. We're going to return done with no error. And we want to return false here because we don't have a user again. The passwords did not match. And we also want to return a message here. And this message essentially is going to say password incorrect, just like that. And if we for some reason did find the user, our passwords are correct. We want to return done again with no error. But this time we're going to return the user that we want to actually authenticate with. This is the user that they have actually logged in as. And lastly, inside of our catch here, let's catch that error. And we don't return done here, but we want to return that error inside of our done statement as our first parameter because we actually had an error with our application. So now the only thing we have left is this get user by email. We need to make sure we pass that in. So we're going to pass that into our initialize function here. And we need to make sure down here that we actually export that function. So we're going to say modules.export, or I'm sorry, module.exports is going to be equal to that initialize function. This is just so we can call that function by requiring in our passport config that we created here. So back into our server, inside of our passport, we actually want to pass in that function. It's going to take in an email. So email, and inside of here, what we're going to do is we just want to say users.find, and we want to find where our user.email is equal to the email that we passed in, and we want to make sure that we return that. And to make this even easier to read, let's make sure we put all of these on different lines, just like this. We can actually put this all onto a single line up here. There we go remove a bunch of these extra parentheses. And there we go. This is our function for finding the user based on the email. And this is our passport that we're configuring. Now that we have our passport configured, what we need to do is we actually need to work on a bunch of use statements, essentially so that our server knows how to use passport. The first thing that we want to do is an app.use. And this one's going to be for flash, which we have not actually required yet. So let's make sure we require that. We're going to say const flash is going to be equal to require. Whoops. In here, we have express flash. We also need to do the exact same thing for session. These are just the libraries that we installed earlier. And now down here with our app.use, we have flash as our first one. The next one we need to use is session. And session actually takes a bunch of different options. The first one is a secret. This is essentially a key that we want to keep secret, which is going to encrypt all of our information for us. And we're going to get this from our environment variables. So we'll say process.env.session, whoops, session underscore secret. This is just going to be the name of our secret key, which we're going to put inside of our .env file. So we'll say session underscore secret. And you can set this to whatever you want. In our case, we'll just set it to secret. You still most likely want to generate this as a random string of characters so that it's more secure. The longer and more random it is, the more secure it'll be. Now back inside of our server here, we actually need to load in our environment variables. So we'll do that at the very top of our application. We can just say if our process.env.node env is not equal to production, essentially, it means that we're in development, we want to require that development dependency of env, and we want to call dot config. And this is going to load in all of our different environment variables and set them inside of process env. Now with that out of the way, we have a few more properties that we need to set. The first one is resave, we want to set this to false. Essentially, this says, should we resave our session variables if nothing has changed? In our case, we don't want to resave it if nothing has changed. And lastly, we have save uninitialized, which again, we want to be false. And essentially this is saying, do you want to save an empty value in the session if there is no value and we don't actually want to do that. 
Now with flash and session out of the way, we can set up a passport. So we can say app.use passport.initialize. This is just a function inside of passport, which is going to set up some of the basics for us. And since we want to store our variables to be persisted across the entire session our user has, we want to use passport.session, which is going to work with our app.use session up here. And now with all that finally out of the way, we can come down to our post for our login, and we actually don't even need this function because we're just going to use the passport authentication middleware. So we can say passport.authenticate, and we want to use the local strategy. And what we want to do is pass it a list of options for things that we want to modify. The first is going to be where do we go if there's a success? So our success redirect is going to go to our homepage, which is just slash up here. And for some reason, if there's a failure, where do we want to redirect? And we want to redirect them back to the login. And we also want to make sure that we show a message. So we'll set failure flash to true. This is just going to let us have a flash message, which we can display to the user, which is going to be equal to our messages in here. So no user with that email or password incorrect, depending on what the error is that they get. And now in order to display that error message, we need to go into our login.egs and we need to use our egs here in order to actually first have an if statement. And we want to check if messages dot error and this is just essentially saying that we have an error message and the way that this messages dot error gets set is flash is going to set a messages variable to all of our different flash messages messages and passport is going to set a error message here which is going to be whatever error that we get for example over here no user with that name or password incorrect is going to be what error is set to so if we do have an error being set what we want to do is we just want to render that so we can just say locals dot messages dot error Actually, we don't even need the locals. We can just remove that. It's just messages.error. Make sure we close that off. And of course, we also need to make sure that we close off our curly braces here. So now we're actually going to display our message if we have one. And if we save, refresh, you can see that we're getting an error. So let's go over to our application here, see what our error is. If we scroll up, you see it is saying that we're having an error here on line 12. It's saying that it can't understand what bcrypt is. And it's actually because it can't understand a wait because we need to have an asynchronous function here. So now if we save that, scroll back down, you see we're getting the same error. And that's just because I put async in the wrong spot. It's this authenticate user that needs to be asynchronous. And now if you save that, you see we're getting a final error here, which is saying that local strategy requires a verify callback. And whoops, don't want to actually go there. And if we scroll down to where we're defining our local strategy, you see that we're not actually passing authenticate user to our local strategy. We're passing it to passport.use. So let's make sure that we are properly passing authenticate user to our new local strategy and not to the passport.use. Now let's save that. Scroll down, you can see that we have no errors with the application, so we can refresh over here and our login page is working. Let's try to register with a user. We'll just do w, w at w, and w. And now if we try to log in with a random email and a random password, we click log in. Whoops, we make sure this is an email. And you'll see that it says no user with that email. Now let's use the correct email and a wrong password, and we'll get password incorrect. And now finally, if we use the correct email and the correct password, click login, you see that it's loading for a while, and that's probably because we have an error. And we do actually have an error. We're not actually implementing our serialized user or our deserialized user functions yet. So let's do that. Inside of our serialized user, all we need to do is serialize our user. So we can just say user.id. We just want to get the user's ID and save that into our session. And we need to make sure that we pass this to the done function. Null is for our error. And in here, user ID is the actual serialized version of our user. Next, we need to do almost the exact same thing for our deserialize. But instead of here, what we want to do is we actually want to get the user. So what we're going to do is wrap this onto a separate line so it's a bit easier to read for you all. And we want to get our user by ID. So we'll just say get user by ID. And we're going to pass it in the ID right here that we're getting. And we want to make sure that we return this. And this get user by ID is something we need to make sure we pass in up here. So let's pass in this get user by ID, go into our server, scroll up to where we defined that, just right here. And we're going to define a function which takes an ID, and we're going to get a user by that ID. And it's going to be almost exactly the same as our email function, but instead of comparing emails, we're going to be comparing IDs just like this. Now we can actually test that. We can go into our email or our register, make sure we register that user. And we can type in the email correctly and the password, click login, and you'll see it redirects us back to that perfect page for our index of where we want to log in if we have an authenticated user. And the best part about using Passport is that we can get our user really easily. Instead of here, instead of passing our name, we want to pass our user's name. So we can just say here, our request.user.name. And request.user is just going to be the actual user that we're using. Now if we save this, make sure we go back to our register page, re-register our user, 
and we want to use that exact email and login, you'll see it says hi w, which is the name of the user that we specified. And that's the power of using session with passport is request.user is always going to be sent to the user that's authenticated for that moment. But there's a big problem with our application. For example, if we were to just save this so that our user no longer exists, we can go to this index page and it gives us an error because we don't have a user and we can access this information even if we're not logged in. But of course, we don't want to allow non-logged in users to access this information. So let's work on protecting all of our different routes for when we're not logged in. And to do this is actually really simple. Let's just minimize this so it's a little bit out of the way. And we just want to create a new function. This function is going to be check authenticated. And this function is going to take a request, response, and next. This is essentially a middleware function, which is just going to take our request and response and a next variable that we call whenever we're done finishing up our authentication here with check authenticated. And what we want to do is we just want to check if the user is authenticated. So because of passport, we can call a function on request, which is called is authenticated. Whoops, authenticated. And this function is just going to return true if there's a user that's authenticated or false if there is no user. So if it returns true, we can just come in here and we just want to return our call to next, essentially saying everything works, just go on to the next. But if it returns false, what we want to do is we want to redirect the user. So we'll say response.redirect. We don't want to redirect them to the login page. So now we can use this check authenticated middleware, go all the way up to here where we're having our app.get and whatever we want to authenticate, we just put in this check authenticated before our actual function and this will get called first. And if for some reason there's a problem, it'll actually redirect the user to that home page or the login page. So now let's save that. And if we just try to go to this page, you'll see immediately we get redirected to login. And again, if we try to go back to that, it's going to redirect us to our login page because we're not logged in yet. We want to do the same thing for when we are logged in. So if we log in with a user, we're just going to register our same W user and we're going to log them in. We don't want to allow them to go back to login. For example, if I type in login, I can go back to the login page, even though I'm already logged in. So we want to use another check. This one's going to be almost exactly the same. So we can come down here, function. But this is going to be called check not authenticated. It's going to take in a request, a response, and a next. And inside of here, we want to do that same check to see if our user is authenticated. But if they are authenticated, we want to redirect them. So we're going to say res.redirect. Whoops. Res.redirect. And we want to redirect them to the home page, just like this. It's going to redirect them back to that dashboard. And if for some reason they're not authenticated, we just want to continue on with the call. So now we can put this check authenticated in all the places we want to check to see if a user is not authenticated. For example, we don't want to allow users to go to the login page if they're already authenticated. We don't want to allow them to log in if they're already authenticated. Same with register. And lastly, again, with register down here. All of these, we want to make sure that no users logged in if they want to access these different routes. So now if we register a user using the register, make sure we log in and we try to go to that login page. So let's type in slash login in the URL, hit enter, and you see that we get an error. So let's check out that function we just wrote. And it looks like down here, we forgot to put in our return for when we're redirecting the user. Now let's save that. Make sure we go back all the way to our register page. Whoops, make sure the name is W, W, same user we've been using this whole time. And we log in. And now if we try to go to that login page, Whoops, login, hit enter. You see it redirects us back to this dashboard page because we're already authenticated. We can do the same thing by trying to go to our register page. And again, it's going to redirect us back here to our dashboard. Now, the very last thing that we have to set up is our final route, which is going to be for logging our user out because right now we have no way to log out. We're just stuck on this page. So we need to create a delete request. And this delete request, we're just going to call log out. And it's going to take our typical request, whoops, request and response variables just like this. And inside of here, all we need to do is just call request.logout, whoops, logout, just like that. And then we can just redirect the user. So we can just say request.redirect, and we just want to redirect back to the login page. This logout function is again something that Passport sets up for us automatically. It'll clear our session and log our user out. And in order to call this delete function, we can't actually do that directly from HTML. What we need to use is we need to use a form and we need to post but since delete is not actually supported by forms, we can only use post. We need to use another final library. So let's go over and install this library, npm i, and this is called method override. And essentially what this will allow us to do is actually override our method that we're using. And so instead of using post, we can actually call this delete method here. So now let's scroll all the way up to the top, make sure we include this library. So we can say const method override is going to be equal to require. 
of method override. And we want to make sure we use that. So we'll say app.use method override. And inside of here, we actually pass what we want our method override to be. In our case, we're just going to use underscore method. This is what we're going to pass for our method. So in order to see that in example, let's go into our index here and create a form. This is going to be our logout form. So the action is just going to be slash logout. And we want to make sure in here that we put question mark and then underscore method. And that's going to be equal to delete. So this underscore method is what we're using to override our method, which we set here, which is going to be post. So we're going to override that with delete so that inside of our server here, we can call this app.delete that we have here instead of app.post for logout. This is just safer because you should always use delete when you're deleting things. So now come down here inside of our form. All we need to do is put a single button, which is going to be our submit button. So we can put the type of submit. And instead of here, we can just put text of logout. Now, if we save that, make sure that we re-register our user so we can put our name, all the same stuff that we've been doing this whole time. You now see we have a logout button. And when we click that, of course, we're going to get an error. And it's because, as I can see, we put request.redirect, and this should be response.redirect. So now let's try that again. Let's make sure we go back to our page, register our user, log in. Everything is looking good. And when we click log out, you see it brings us back to the login because our user is logged out and we no longer can go and access our homepage. And finally, we have an entirely working login application, which you can plug into your project you're working on. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and also subscribe to the channel for more videos of me simplifying the web. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.